Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Uh, <coughs> item one on the agenda, ladies and gentlemen, are the minutes of the previous meeting. Confirm the minutes of the council meeting which took place on the 18th of October and of the extraordinary council meeting which held on the 29th of November 2016. Mr. Hyman, what can I do for you? Uh, thank you, Chairman. At the council meeting, I did um, propose an amendment and it hasn't been minuted. Uh, I do apologise. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. At the council meeting uh, which we're referring to here, um, I did propose an amendment and it hasn't been minuted in there. I noted that uh, elsewhere in the minutes uh, amendments had been noticed, but uh, not this particular one. It was the one where uh, I'd simply added or tried to add on to the end a, um, uh, the inclusion of some words to satisfy the Habitats uh, Directive. In, in, uh, but it hasn't been minuted, so can that be added in or should it be added in? And that would be at 41.16 on page 10. Mr. Mayor, could I interrupt, please? Could you ask the councillor to speak a little bit louder? I can't at any time understand what he's saying. Thank you, Councillor. Most Desire. of them are saying the same. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I, d I don't know, Councillor Hyman. I don't have a note, and um, we'll sort it out afterwards. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Hyman withdrew his um, proposal, therefore it shouldn't be reflected in the minutes as it was withdrawn. I recall that he withdrew an earlier amendment, uh, which is under 3316. Um, I, wasn't, I can't remember him withdrawing a second amendment. Mr. Mayor, my memory is that he did withdraw the amendment. However, I'm happy for officers to take, take that away and check, double check and make sure that the minute is correct. I think that would be the best thing at the moment. Councillor Hyman, we will, we will check it on the video record and uh, make any adjustment that is necessary. Okay, with that um, detail, are you agreed that I sign the minutes as a correct record? Agreed. Thank you very much. I'll sign them later. Item two. Apologies for absence. Mr. Taylor, are there any apologies? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We've received apologies from councillors Brian Adams, Mike Band, David Else, Jill Hargreaves, Nicholas Holder, David Hunter, Anna James, Libby Piper, Sam Pritchard and Simon Thornton. Thank you, Bob. Any more that everybody know, anybody knows about? Yes, yes Councillor Ward. Thank you very much. <coughs> Item three. Declarations of interest. Oh, sorry, Councillor Lee. That's fine, Mr. Mayor. I think Councillor Bob Upton. Sorry, Councillor Bob Upton, please. Any others? No. Item three, declarations of interest. Mr. Taylor. None received in advance, Mr. Mayor. Do any members present wish to declare any interest in any of the items? No? Good. Thank you very much. Mayor's announcements. Um, I have very little to announce at this time other than um, that we had a very successful Christmas fair in, in the parlour and in here at the beginning of December and raised just about £400 for the Mayor's charities. So thank you to those of you who came and spent your money. Particular thanks to um, Councillor Band and Councillor Wheatley who with their spouses came and uh, ran a couple of the stalls. That was very kind of you. Um, the interest in having mayor, the Mayor to come to visit um, their premises and events has stepped up a gear as you might expect coming up towards Christmas and uh, I'm up to my ears in carol services and old people's homes um, and pantomimes. So uh, if you can't see me 
For example, tomorrow evening at the Dunsfold JPC, you can rest assured that somewhere or other I'm singing a little town of Bethlehem or um, <laughs> answering the question, are you enjoying it? <laughs> um, from uh, a member of the public. So thank, thank you very much. And uh, we move on swiftly to questions from members of the public. Are there any questions from members of the public? None received, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. And any from uh, members? None received, Mr. Mayor. And are there any motions? None received. Moving swiftly on then, um, we have several minutes of committees to go through this evening, uh, starting with the minutes of the executive. Could I ask the leader of the council to come forward to present them? Mr Mayor, thank you. I am pleased to present the minutes of the executive held on the 1st of November and I believe I have a seconder. Mr Mayor, I'm happy to second. Thank you. Mr Mayor, items in part one, recommendations to the council. Item 78, which is the budget management and mid-year mid budget review. The um, detailed report before members um, details both the, um, a number of um, items and spends. I've, do I have any speakers in that part? Councillor Hyman. Thank you, Chairman. This is the um, uh, budget review. We're looking to save money. Um, I've got a, a question that refers to page 13 um, of your committee papers. Uh, item A2 there, um, there's an uh, £80,000 uh, environment which is in, in respect to the Gostry Meadow Pavilion. Uh, item C down the bottom of the page, there's the Manfield Park Industrial Units and um, that I understand is on, likely to be on Greenbelt. And D um, is also, that one is for uh, French and Common site redevelopment. Can you just confirm that all of those, that we have counted on those being spent, but um, each of those appears to me to be subject to a future planning permission. Uh, so if you can confirm that is a possible, uh, there are possible savings in future, um, if the planning permission isn't granted for those. Thank you. Any other speakers? Leader. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, at the moment, these are all about rescheduling the budgets, Councillor Hyman, um, and uh, at least one of the items we will, will come under review um, at a later stage uh, in the early part of next year. Thank you. I move to the next oh, oh. item. I think we better do the recommendations. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I think we better do the recommendations. <laughs> so on page 15 to page 16, recommendations 57 to 67. I don't intend to go through them individually. Are they agreed? agreed. Thank you very much. Does anybody wish to uh, have their objections recorded? Okay, item 79. 
Right, Mr Mayor, um, the next item, number item 79 on page 16 of the agenda, um, relates to the Ewhurst Conservation Area Appraisal. Uh, members will be aware that we've um, carried out conservation area appraisals in a number of our um, towns and villages which have been coming before both executive and council over the last few months and the latest um, at item 79 is the Ewhurst Conservation Area Appraisal. I don't believe there are any speakers under that item. Are there? Yes, there, there is a speaker there. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Henry. Um, as, as the councillor for, for Ewhurst, uh, I wel welcome the, the, these appraisals. May I, I put the two together? Because we've got one for Ewhurst Village and one for the conservation area. May, may I speak to the, to, for, to the two of them? Yes, I feel very, very light. Um, um, the, the village welcomes the, these appraisals and uh, it will be very much appreciated by the community in, in future times. Um, and I'd also like to, to say my thanks to the, the officers who prepared these uh, reports. They're, they're extremely interesting and will be uh, um, very enlightening to, to the whole of the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other Contributions? Yes, Councillor Bold. Mayor, I'm not. Stand. not stand, thank, thank you. Thank you. I'm not quite sure whether this is uh, which of the two, but if you, with your indulgence, if you could uh, allow me, it's a picture of a wonderful telephone kiosk on page um, 82. A lovely red telephone box. I would like to remind all councillors and members of the public. <laughs> The BT are, um, may close this telephone kiosk. Um, BT are conducting a consultation exercise with the aid of Waverley to get feedback on whether or not to close telephone kiosks throughout our community, throughout our, throughout our borough. You could, use, you could adopt the telephone kiosk, as mentioned in the report, and uh, you could use it for many different uh, public Council purposes. Councillor Bolton, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but nobody can hear you because you, you're blocking the microphone with your iPad. Right. <laughs> I welcome the picture of the telephone kiosk, and I'd be grateful if people could contribute to the consultation which BT and Waverley are conducting about telephone kiosks. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers? No? Do you wish to sum up anything, Leader? Mr Mayor, no, thank you. I think um, Councillor Henry has very adequately um, summed up uh, the, the, uh, the item. Thank you. Recommendation 68 on page 17. Is that agreed? Thank you very much. We move on to the second conservation area for Ewhurst Green. Mr Mayor, can we take it that uh, we, uh, as I say, along with uh, Councillor Henry's uh, summing up, that uh, perhaps we uh, move the recommendation, unless anyone wishes to speak. Does anyone wish to speak specifically to that one? No. In that case, the recommendation is 69 on page 18. Is it agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. We move into part two. Mr Mayor, thank you. There are a number of items of report in part two. Um, I believe that um, we do have some speakers, um, on, certainly on item 85, which is the development of affordable homes at Sheridan in Cranley. Thank you. Yes, I, I have a single speaker, which is Councillor Ramsdale. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I just wanted to note to everybody how pleased I am regarding uh, para 85 on page 19 um, that the executive in its meeting on the first is a result to bring forward work on the building of affordable homes um, and therefore bring forward of course the related expenditure and therefore bring that budget forward in early year. Um, as an accountant that's insignificant to me because uh, with building inflation far exceeding normal inflation the sooner you build things the more you can get for your money. And, of course, it means that the people who need affordable homes can move into them sooner. 
Um, I did wonder if one of the portfolio holders, that's guess housing or, or finance, could reflect on whether this is indicative of uh, an improvement generally in housing delivery, because uh, I think that's a great thing at the time of difficult constraints on our houses, not least financial. Um, and what might be the causes of the fact that things need to be looking better. But thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ramsdale. Leader. Thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. Yes, indeed, um, it, it is a really good news story at, uh, at Sheridan, as, as you say. Um, we've, um, you, you may or may not have also picked up from other executive minutes coming forward that we've a number of other planning commissions that we're, we're moving on with. Um, we are really trying to, to make sure now that um, we've got the designs in place, the procurement is, is happening and, and we're able to, to move, move forward with, with a number of them, Councillor Ramsdale. Uh, we have a, an excellent team of officers uh, working on, on, on these proposals and um, I think you'll, you'll be pleased to hear that there will be more, more coming forward uh, at, a, at a, much, uh, a much faster rate, which is good news. Thank you. Thank you. That uh, brings us to the end of the minutes of that executive meeting. Um, are they agreed? agreed? Thank you very much. We move on to the executive of the 29th of November, which is on page 91 of your agenda papers. And hand back over to the leader. Mr Mayor, thank you. I'm pleased to present the minutes of the um, executive of the 29th of November and I believe I have a seconder. Mr Mayor, I'm happy to second again. Okay. The um, first item uh, on, on those uh, minutes which I'm pleased to present um, in terms of recommendations to Council under Part 1 is the um, detailed budget management report. I don't believe there are any speakers, but I'm not sure. Does anybody wish to speak on this item? Doesn't look like it. Okay, so we move directly to the recommendations, which are on page 96, numbered 70 to 80. Are they agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. Item 92. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, moving next to the next part of the budget report which again relates to the HRA the housing revenue account um, and again a uh, very detailed report um, under under that item there are a number of recommendations there but again I don't know if we actually have any speakers to that item does anybody wish to speak to this item Councillor Hyman please Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the HRA business plan, as we know, had assumed a permanent inflation of rental income, so we're in a little bit of a difficult position because uh, the government didn't want to inflate uh, uh, benefits bill too much. Uh, so reality is not quite as uh, easy as it has been for the past six years, um, where the council's uh, housing revenue count's been uh, awash with money, and it's not going to be in the future. But there is some very, very good news, of course. We're very fortunate in uh, this council that we do still own well over a billion pounds worth of housing revenue account assets. We've got 5,000 council homes and a number of councils uh, sold theirs off extremely cheaply and don't have that benefit behind them. So when the bad times happen, we have got a buffer. I've got a slight concern with the... Um, a couple of issues. There's a couple of issues in the in the documentation, particularly on page 101, at uh, minute 92.29. If I can find it, uh, you'll see at the end of 92.29, middle of that page, it says that um, we're going to have a problem. It says, in, in contrast to the optimism which uh, the plan had uh, had when it was launched in 2012, that in future over 20% of Waverley's homes would fall out of the decent home standard mm -hmm. due to curtailment of the kitchen and bathroom replacement programme over the next three years. That's not quite such a, uh, the, the bad news that it sounds, because um, it's, it's not entirely true. Back in about 2003, 2004, 
because the decent home standard, the government's decent home standard, was uh, a very low standard and Waverley needed to promote their stock transfer attempt, they invented the, the Waverley standard. It's a far higher standard, so it's, it's not. And if, you, if I can refer you back to um, 92.12, uh, 92.11, which is uh, on page 98, you'll see that at the end it says, um, within council homes, to achieve the council enhanced decent home standard by 2015. So if, if I then take you forward to uh, minute 92.12, which is uh, on page 98, yes, at the very bottom, it says... Um, it will have an impact on tenant satisfaction result in a, de a gradual decrease in the number of homes meeting the government's decent home standard. That isn't actually true. It's the Waverley standard that we would not be meeting. Meeting the government's decent home standard, in my opinion, is um, it, it, we won't, I don't have any trouble with because it's a far lower standard. So if officers could just confirm that what we work to is not the government's decent home standard, but actually our own far higher standard. No complaints at that, but it's just a matter of the... Uh, accuracy of the of the minutes and accuracy of the reports thank you councillor king thank you very much indeed mr mayor i won't go into the details it's a long complicated report but what i really wanted to say despite um mr Heim, councillor hyman's comments he's right it is the, the minute on 9212 should say our or waverley's decent home standard the standard of our housing was very poor. Uh, we've spent a lot of money and a lot of time in raising the standards, and we have got there. We've reached our standard. But as Mr. Hyman rightly says, under the present proposals, we, over the next three years, of course the next three years, if we remain where we are, we will fall out of that decent home standard. However, three years is a very long time in this council chamber, uh, and certainly it's a long time in, in government politics. And we are waiting for the white paper which is due out, I believe, in January, which hopefully will give us a little bit more encouragement and not be so gloomy and, and full of gloom and doom. The proposed business plan is, going to, is only set for a short period of time rather than the long 30-year programme because of that very thing. It has to be flexible, it has to be mobile, and we have to be sharp on our feet to make sure our stock stays in good condition for the benefit of our tenants. But what else I wanted to say was actually to thank the officer group because there's been a, a combined officer group worked on this very hard uh, right through the summer to get where we are now to reach a balanced budget and I'm really pleased we've got there. I also wish to say the um, ONS committee were extremely helpful and I appreciated all their comments. Thank you very much. Here, here. Thank you Councillor King with comments from Councillor Edwards. Um, has anyone else wish to speak on this item? Do you wish to say anything further, Spring Leader? I think um, uh, Councillor Mrs King um, sort of summarised a, a great deal of this, but um, I, I would just like to add my thanks and, and that of the rest of the executive to um, the Corporate Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Um, they've done some, some sterling work on, on this. Um, there is no doubt that we, we face some very challenging times now with the... Um, changes that the, the government have made and um, we're having to react to those and um, uh, you know cut our cloth and, and make changes accordingly so um, again I'd, as I say I'd like to thank um, both the councillors on, on that committee and um, also the officers who worked very hard um, over the last few weeks to, to address the, uh, the changes and, and uh, the, uh, the business plan here. Um, that's my summary, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay, we move to the recommendations on page 101, uh, numbered 81 to 83. Are they agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. Uh, item 93, of course, was subject of a completely different council meeting. So we move on to item 94. Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. Um, item 94. Um, details um, in, in great detail the uh, Waverley Family Support Service and uh, the proposal for Waverley to participate 
in the government's vulnerable persons relocation scheme. Um, colleagues will, will obviously be aware of the, um, the, the difficulties being faced um, by a number of, of very vulnerable um, Syrian refugee families. Um, there is a, a government initiative which Waverley will be uh, participating in and we will be taking the proposal is to take five families uh, over the next five years. We're working very closely with our colleagues uh, across the borough and with our, our county council colleagues as well uh, to ensure best practice and learnings um, in terms of pulling together all the plans and proposals for the resettlement um, into the Waverley Borough. And um, in line with that, one of the first uh, things that we will need to do to actually uh, start that action plan is to recruit um, additional family support officers uh, to our team. Waverley's got an extremely strong family support uh, team. Um, it's uh, respected uh, across the south of England, but especially in Surrey. Um, and we have a lot of experience dealing with uh, very vul vulnerable and challenging families and uh, people um, within Waverley. So that would be really good in terms of we, we already have that part of our in infrastructure and a much needed infrastructure in place um, ready for, for obviously help it, helping these, these refugees. So um, the, uh, the, the proposal actually is that um, we recruit to the team and uh, that comes in, in the recommendations for that post. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Martin. Um, thank you. I would like to commend the executive for their, ac their actions here in supporting the government's vulnerable persons uh, relocation scheme in relation to these uh, Syrian refugees. If every local authority across the country uh, did a little, then the addition of all of that would solve the issue. Uh, and I think it's a very strong and very good message to send that we are participating in this, along with many other boroughs and districts in the county. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any other speakers on this item? In which case, we move to the recommendations on page 105, uh, 84 through to 86. Are they agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. Item 95. Thank you. Item 95 is um, uh, updating the scheme of delegation for neighbourhood planning. Uh, a lot of this is designed to ensure that um, not only do we simplify the process, um, but we also m ensure that it's a quicker and uh, more cost-effective process as well. And um, colleagues will see that um, there's one recommendation under that item. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Leader. Does anybody wish to speak to this? No, in which case the recommendation is... On, well, it's actually on page 106, uh, and it's number 87, on page 108. <coughs> Is that agreed? Agreed. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Item 96. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, the item 96 refers to um, <laughs> us making best use of the Better Care Fund, and um, that's again uh, something that we are working on, on in conjunction with a number of our other uh, partners and stakeholders. And um, again, under that <coughs> item, there are th uh, two, rec three recommendations, Mr. Mayor. Do we have anybody wishing to speak on this item? No, in which case we move to the recommendations 88 through to 90, which are on pages 110 and 111. Are they agreed? agreed. Thank you very much. Item 97. Mr Mayor, thank you. Item 97 refers to the review of um, polling places. Um, Colleagues will be aware that we've had a, a number of um, elections in the, uh, in the last uh, year and um, 
obviously it's it's become quite a hot topic in terms of the disruption certainly to some of the the local schools so an, another review um, was undertaken and as a result of that uh, the uh, Busbridge Junior School um, is being changed and um, they will now uh, no longer have to close. There are a number of other proposals as well. Um, the common room at Gorselands actually will, in the Hale and Heath End Ward of Farnham, will remain as one of the, um, one of the actual uh, polling stations. Um, there are also some other, other changes recommended. Uh, the Crown Court room um, in uh, Godalming is also changing. And uh, as there are no parking facilities at this venue, um, and we will be using the Wilfred Noyce Centre, and um, Cranley Village Hall uh, will become the uh, polling station for Cranley. Um, so again, I think um, the final one, sorry, Chichester Hall in Petworth Road, um, that will actually remain the same. But I think generally it's great to see that we've not got so much disruption with certain schools closing, um, with places affected like um, the uh, Cranley Arts Centre. And um, again, I think this is, is seen generally um, from what we've, what we've heard in terms of the consultation as a very positive step. Uh, there are a number of recommendations, Mr Mayor. I'm not sure if we have anyone speaking on the item. Thank you. Oh, a forest of hands. Councillor Coburn. <laughs> Um, yes, no, I just really want to thoroughly endorse what the leader has just said. Uh, you know, one day off sounds nothing to people without dependent children, but it can be, make such a difference either to the children themselves, if they happen to be the sort of children that need total uh, regularity in their lives, and we have quite a few of those children in our schools, but also to working parents. And, you know, you see so many of them uh, in most of the areas in which we live, flying out of the house, getting the children to school, going to work, getting back, getting them to scouts, get all of these things. And one day off makes a huge difference to parents and carers, the, what they have to organise for us to go and vote. So I think anything we can do, and I, I think over the recent years, to find some more of these venues, good parking too, obviously, is an essential for the people who need to park fairly close to the venue. But I really do think this is good news. And, and about time, really, you know, the idea that schools were an easy target and anybody can have a day off, it, it really wasn't desperately fair on working parents. So I think this is a, a very good move and I'm, I'm delighted to support it. Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Councillor Seaborn, did you wish to speak? Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, uh, the proposal to relocate polling provision from Busbridge uh, Junior School to the nearby Busbridge Church is, is really welcome. It not only removes the disruption, but uh, I'd also like to, to thank the church for taking this on. Busbridge Church is uh, well known in the area for a, a raft of community service, and this, this actually expands that community service. So a thoroughly welcome recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Isherwood. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As a governor of uh, Beacon Hill School, <laughs> I can assure you that the head teacher, the staff, and the parents in particular will welcome this change. It's something they've been pressing for for some time, and like my colleagues, I heartily recommend this recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? No, in which case we move to the recommendations, please, on page 114 and 115. They're numbered 91 to 96. Are they agreed? agreed. Thank you very much. Uh, move on to part two. Mr Mayor, thank you. Um, there are a number of matters of report in part two. Um, and as far as I'm aware, we don't have any speakers on any of those items. In that case, can we take the items as noted? Thank you. So that uh, concludes the minutes of the executive for the 29th of November. Are they agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. We move on to the special executive meeting, which was held this evening. 
and for which you have had papers circulated. I call on the leader to uh, propose these. Mr Mayor, thank you. I'd like to propose the minutes of the special executive held at six o'clock this evening and I believe I have a seconder. Again, happy to second. Mr Mayor, um, the um, item uh, that we're referring to here was actually uh, held in exempt due to the commercially sensitive nature. Um, so I'm happy to summarise, but if members obviously want to go into detailed questions, I would ask that we please go into exempt. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, is it your wish that you are likely to want to refer to matters which are in the exempt papers in anything that you wish to say? In which case we will move into exempt. If not, then we can just um, talk about the recommendation in a general way. Thank you. Does anybody wish to speak? Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I uh, will keep, my, keep, keep what I've got to say away from, from exempt, so uh, I had uh, more prepared if we were going to go in that direction. But essentially what we have is a really good news story of the, the, the first proposal from the Investment Advisory Board that was only set up, um, uh, I think it was at the last, council, last full council meeting. Uh, we've made terrific work in the last few weeks to bring this forward um, and to, uh, to, to help the council for, um, uh, make, make its first acquisition. And I, I commend the, uh, the, the recommendations to council. Thank you. Councillor Frost. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. I'm delighted to see this paper before us. The paper is very full. It tells us exactly what is involved in this, and I'm very happy to support the recommendation. Thank you. I think I saw Councillor Martin. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd like to congratulate the Deputy Leader um, on... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> On, uh, on showing infinite wisdom uh, uh, and uh, f following in the path of another deputy leader of, uh, of another council not far away from here, uh, which has a very similar policy, so I commend this to the council. I can't think who you mean. Um, uh, anybody else wish to speak on this item? Yes, Councillor de Gaulle. I do have a question, but it relates to the pink papers. Do we need to go into exempt? If you wish to refer to it, yes, we do. Uh, luckily, there are no members of the public here, so going into exempt is a matter of turning off the webcast. Yes. So we need to uh, resolve. Sorry. Sorry, Alan, the one night you decided to stay. <laughs> okay. Pursuant to Procedure Rule 20 and in accordance with the Section 100A, Bracket 4 of the Local Government Act of 1972, the press and public be excluded from the meeting during consideration of the following item on the grounds that it is likely, in view of the nature of the business, to be transacted or the nature of the proceedings, that if members of the public were present during this item, there would be disclosure to them of exempt information as defined by section 1001 of the Act of the description specified in paragraph 3 of the revised part 1 of Schedule 12A to the Local Government Act of 1972, namely information relating to the financial or business affairs of any particular person, including the authority holding that information. Is that agreed? Thank you. Please nip next door and ask Alan if he wants to come back. Thank you, Councillor Reynolds. Uh, item Mr. recommendation Man, 97 on. I don't have a page number on the uh, on the minute, but. Uh, Recommendation 97 on the minutes of today's meeting. Is that agreed? Thank you very much. Thank you, Leader. We now move to uh, item 9. 
Uh, my agenda papers have uh, item 10 before item 9, so uh, make sure you're looking at the right bit if yours are the same as mine. Page 125, the minutes of the Audit Committee. Um, Councillor Gray will introduce the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm pleased to present the minutes of the Audit Committee meeting on the 15th of November, and I believe I have a seconder. Mr. Mayor, happy to second. Thank you. I, I have one item in part one. Um, if I could just go through that, just summarize it, it's, it's basically the appointment of external auditors. Uh, our current contract expires after the 2016-17 audit and we have looked at a number of uh, options that uh, were put forward to the, uh, to the audit committee. Um, the first option was to make a standalone appointment that was for Waverley making its own appointment of auditors. The second was to set up a a joint audit partnership with like-minded councils, or the third option, which was to opt in to the sector-led body. After discussion, it was felt that the third, uh, third option was the best for this council. It's a, 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 an opportunity that, that was basically comes about from the local government uh, organization setting up um, this, this body that we, we, we can opt into and that's the recommendation of the audit committee. I don't know if there's any speakers. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Would anybody wish to speak on this item? Uh, Councillor Goodrich. Could I ask a, a question of clarification? Um, I heard Councillor Gray say that this would take uh, effect after the 16-17 accounts have been audited. I see the recommendation refers to 18-19. What happens to 17-18? I'm looking through my notes actually. I quoted from uh, what was actually in, in the beginning there. Um, my understanding is that it is affected from 1819. I don't know whether the officers can help on, on that. It doesn't answer the question what happens for 1718. The existing auditors, uh, the existing auditors I, I understand. Fine. Thank, you, thank you for that help and thank you uh, Councillor Goodrich for that, that question. A very appropriate question <coughs> and sorry for my hesitation in, in, in answering it. Very well, then um, we have one recommendation, which is on page 128. Is that agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. Part two, Councillor Gray. Yes, part two. Um, I believe there's a speaker on part two, uh, Mr. Mayor. I don't really want to say anything, anything more. It's there um, and it's covered. Thank you. Can you turn your microphone off, please? Councillor Hyman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you uh, uh, to the Chairman of the Audit Committee. We uh, uh, did have a good debate at that meeting, and under item, um, let me try and find it, minute 37, uh, yes, the Council Fraud Investigation Summary, there's a, a matter which some members of the public have been bringing up, and we want to get a resolution, I suppose. It's the 2014 fraud event. Um, I've been told by members of the public that there is now an internal investigation uh, being carried out. I'm sorry, Councillor Hyman, that item does not refer to this minute. Uh, but, uh, but it was raised under that, so all I wanted to know was are no, we able, you know, what status does that investigation have, because I think it's of... of uh, I, I think that is um, outside of the scope of, of this uh, since it's not part of this counter-fraud investigation summary uh, in the minutes. so um, I'm very surprised in terms of transparency that uh, we're not able to ask about that, but thank you very much indeed, thank you. Mr Mayor. I'm advised that uh, you can, of course, raise it at the next audit committee meeting. 
Councillor Gray, are you concluded? Thank you, Mr Mayor. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that we will look into the, the question that um, Councillor Hyman's raised um, and the appropriate time would be for the next audit or for him to put the question to me and I'd be more than happy to answer that question. Um, I think that uh, that concludes the minutes of the audit committee. Um, I'd just like to thank the members of the audit committee who are putting in a lot of work at the moment, work that's not only minuted here but additional work. Uh, Councillor Seaborn has been looking at the procurement process and Councillor Hess is doing some work on our risk, uh, risk assessment and risk management process. Um, so my thanks to, to all the members. There's a lot of hard work going on. That concludes the minutes of the Audit Committee held on the 15th of November. Mr. Thank you, Councillor Gray. Are they agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. We move to item 10, which is the minutes of the Licensing Committee. The... Uh, Chairman of Licensing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm pleased to present the meeting, the minutes of the committee meeting held on the 17th of November 2016. I believe I have a seconder. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm pleased to, to second. There is one item in part one, which is the uh, public. Uh, review of the Council's policy for sexual entertainment venues. Uh, in the course of the public consultation, we did have one objection from a person who felt that there should not be any such establishments in Waverley. I'd just like to point out that this policy is not designed to encourage or promote the establishment of such uh, outlets. We are required by law to have such uh, a policy and this is in any way just a revamp or of the original policy uh, with just a few dates and very minor details changed so uh, any speakers this is that there is a rich vein of innuendo and double entendre to be mined <laughs> are there any speakers on that issue in which case, we move to the recommendation on page 134. Thank you, I didn't ask, but that'll do. <laughs> I have no speakers in part two, Mr. Mayor, and uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are those minutes agreed? Well, there are uh, no other issues and no requirement to go into exempt again. So that concludes this evening's meeting. Thank you all very much, and see you in the Mayor's Parliament in a few minutes. Please rise whilst the Mayor leaves the chamber.